Is decimal a good unit in triangle strategy? Let's find out. All right, so decimal, he's kind of a weird unit. Uh, you can kind of tell by his appearance. He is a barrel robot, essentially, or automaton. Um, so what does he do? What is he good at? So let's look at his stats before we go into his skills. Uh, he has decent strength, uh, decent magic attack. He has pretty, pretty like high, medium physical and magic defense. So he is a barrel, so it kind of makes sense that he could take a hit or two. He has really good accuracy, lower speed, kind of like medium slash low evasion, average jump, and then lower movement. So he has a movement of four. Uh, but he shouldn't really be moving, and it, it also his luck is extremely low. Alright, so let's look at his weapon damage for just smacking something. So when fully upgraded, and also when equipping the Obsidian Anklet, he has 217 power at level 50 for a, a basic melee attack. This is not what he's going to be doing though, so this is fine that it's not that high. Um, Alright, so Automaton's Artifice. Become immune to all status ailments, so he is completely immune to status effects, which is insane. Um, yeah, but you also don't recover TP naturally. So the way he generates TP is through charge TP, where you have to not move and you have to wait. So you can't do anything and he'll recover 3 TP. Uh, you can get around this by using TP batteries, like you can use Medina or Julio to give him TP so that he can just keep spamming things, uh, but alternatively, he can wait. Um, also, he is a really good candidate for Obsidian Anklet because this doesn't have a downside on him. It just boosts his magic and strength by 5, uh, but it, it, there's no natural TP regen, and I did test this, and other people have tested this as well. If you wait and you have Obsidian Anklet and you don't move, charge TP still triggers. So Obsidian Anklet is just one of the best things for him. He's one of the few units who can get away with running it without it being annoying. Uh, so that's a really good thing to do. Uh, I threw the red anklet on him because he hits so many things. Um, like honestly, you're better off just giving him a magic bracelet. So obsidian anklet and magic bracelet are probably his best items just to boost his damage. Because he'll probably kill things from just spamming his AoEs because all he has is AoEs. Um, so this is a fine thing too, but yeah, so if you have a battery, you could run both these anklets, but alternatively, magic bracelet's probably a little bit better. Alright, so his first ability, 2 TP, target, in brackets, HP 3, deal non-elemental magic damage to all enemies within range whose HP is a multiple of 3. So, he's a very weird unit in that he often can't directly target things with his abilities. You will hover over his abilities and they will reveal which targets will be hit, and I'll show that pretty soon. Um, so like if, if you wanted to specifically use an ability on an enemy, you can cycle through all of his different targets, like because he has things that target based on different so, like criteria, like you know, multiple of three, uh, multiple of four, and so on. So if you want to specifically hit, uh, a like it, 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 you know, if you want to hit a specific target, <laughs> you can go through his abilities and eventually you might get that. There are instances where he can't hit very many targets or any targets. Uh, generally, he'll be able to hit like a few things if he's within range. A lot of these abilities have a range of 1 to 10. Um, so okay, okay, so let's uh, go to the next one. Uh, also note that non-elemental magic damage is probably one of the better forms of magic damage because it ignores weakness and resistance. So if an enemy were resistant to fire magic, for example, and use fire magic on them, they take less damage. Non-elemental magic damage, as far as I know, the only thing that reduces it is magic defense, whereas with elemental magic damage, if they have a resistance, like the magic defense reduces it and the resistance reduces it. So this is almost like, it's like resistance ignoring, but not armor ignoring, so something to keep in mind. Next we have target HP 4, more non-elemental magic damage. Also note the damage values are the same, like 260, 260 for these two. So it's the same damage. Uh, it hits... All enemies within range whose HP is a multiple of 4 and decreases their movement by 1. So if you can hit a bunch of enemies with this, this can put like a, a slight movement debuff on them for 3 turns, which is kind of nice. And if you combine that with ice magic spam, you can shave off 2 movement from enemy units that are approaching you. 
So that's actually pretty decent. Um, and, and like I said earlier, like if you can't hit things with HP 3, check if you can hit them with HP 4, check if you can hit them with HP 5, and so on. Uh, okay, so next, HP 5. This one is insane. Uh, so, same thing. It's, this one hits a little bit harder than HP 3 and 4. And also, it only hits things uh, whose health is a multiple of 5, their current health. And you have a chance to instantly kill them. So I tested this on same leveled enemies. Against level 50 enemies at level 50, it has a 10% chance to kill things. So if you can hit 10 targets, like generally one of them will instantly die. So that's crazy. And it also does pretty good damage too. So even if it doesn't instant kill, it, it hits pretty hard. Um, but against, so if you're like level 20 and the enemy's level 20, it should hit, it should have a 10% chance to instant kill. And that increases the higher level you like you are versus them like if they're lower level it'll increase the chance to kill and if they're higher level than you it'll decrease it and also it'll decrease it against bosses and some bosses are immune to instant kills so something to keep in mind uh, next we have assist tp zero so raise the strength and magic attack of all allies within range with zero tp for three turns so this ability is okay, like if you have a bunch of things that have no TP, you can give them a buff. But it's it's a little annoying because if you're running batteries, you're going to have a lot of excess TP, so this isn't going to hit very many targets. So the only case this would be useful is if you just did like a super aggressive play and like used 3 and 4 or even 5 TP abilities in all your units and then he uses this. So it still could be good. I mean it's a, it's a damage buff that hits up to 10 tile range. So even if it just goes on like three or four of your allies, that's pretty worth it. So it's it's decent. Uh, and then you have target height plus or five plus. So any enemy that is above you, who are five or more squares above you. So if you look at like the height range of uh, like if he's low in elevation, everything that's higher in elevation he'll hit. So this is actually pretty good. Uh, it's bad on flat maps, but it's good. It's great on maps where there's elevation, especially if there's enemies on any kind of high ground. Or even if there's just enemies on the same level as you and you just go down in elevation, then you can hit everything with this. So this is very good. Uh, the reason that, like, you know, one of the things about it, though, is, like, it's 4 TP and it does more damage. But it doesn't have, like, you know, instant kill, uh, decreased movement. So it's just, like, huge damage to everything above you. So this is, like, one of his more consistent abilities that you can rely on as long as you have an elevation of five of like five less than the targets you're attacking so this one is probably the easiest to hit every enemy nearby with because all you have to do is just be lower than them so whereas the other ones you'll generally hit like two to five targets depending on enemy density like how many enemies are around you and then finally we have target hp7 use all tp to damage all enemies whose current hp ends with seven so this is one of those ones where you can use it at like 1 TP or at 5, and the damage scales depending on how much TP is consumed. So in this case, it can hit up to 434 magnitude. So this one's not going to usually hit a ton of things, so you can always check to see if it does. If it does, it's worth using, but depending on how many enemies are within range with these conditions, you'll want to use different attacks. So. So his, his kit is really weird. He, like, generally damages things in a huge radius, like in a huge area. But he can't specifically damage things or focus them. The only way he can focus them is by cycling through these to find the thing that can hit the target you want to hit. So it's just kind of... It's a little random in that way. Sometimes you can't hit the target you want to hit. So it just depends. But he also is very, like, static. So let's go over his upgrades really quick. And then we'll throw him in a mock battle. Alright. Okay. Alright, so you want his weapon damage up because weapon potency scales ability damage, so you do want these. Um, he also has some health, some basic defense, and some evasion. So these are pretty cheap, so you might as well get them. You don't have to. He shouldn't be getting hit that often anyways. He should basically be kind of in the back lines just spamming spells with like things around him to protect him. But that's like you can get these if you want. Uh, the things you definitely need to get, you want to get these two. 
and then you want to get these three. These increase the damage dealt by HP 3, HP 4, and HP 5. So these are abilities you're going to be spamming, you want those. And then optionally, I, I would say HP 7, you can get it if you want. It's not bad, it's not really great, it's just decent. Because all of his other abilities are a little bit more consistent, like having a, a thing end in a 7 is pretty specific. Like being a multiple of a thing is more likely to occur because you can have things ending in different values and as long as it's a multiple of that number it will hit them so target hp7 can be good and you might as well get it if you plan on running him long term but it's definitely not a priority i would say the damage boosts and the weapon potency are a priority and then the rest the tanking stuff you can get it if you want to but he shouldn't be getting smacked a lot anyways and then HP 7 is probably... I would do damage boost, then get HP 7, and then defensive buffs. The evasion plus 1 is whatever. He's not very evasive, so... He's a barrel. <laughs> it makes sense. Alright, let's check out his abilities. Let's do a map. We'll do a map that everyone likes to spam. This map, we'll do this one. This is a, a good map to farm. Not with him, though, because of the inconsistent AoE. Actually, no, maybe not. Maybe he can, uh, hold on. Yeah, he should be able to kill all of them. Let's just, let's just, uh, I'll in tandem him really quick. He actually might be able to kill all of them with just height plus five because they're all on high ground. So. Okay, so let's go over, like, the basic tactics of Decimal. So you either, you either run him in one of two ways. You either have him cast a thing and then wait a turn to recharge his TP, or you have him cast a thing and then you have a battery constantly filling him uh, with TP. I would say the battery is the best way to use him, uh, because he doesn't regenerate TP on his own. Like, you have to wait, which sucks. Like, the, the main downside of him is that his TP regen is bad because you have to waste turns, but the upside is that he has, like, far-reaching damage. Alright, so let's go here. We should be able to HP. I don't have enough TP to do it. But you can see here the value of uh, height plus 5, or 5 plus. It'll hit everything that's above you. And they don't need to be that much higher than you either. This is like an extreme example. Uh, let's see, targets. So when you actually hit use, it'll show you the target. So like right now, it's kind of hard to tell. Like you can see, it's like highlighting the health. Um, but if you hit use, it'll show you which targets will be hit. So you can, you can figure out, like, you can go through his abilities and see what will be hit. So I'm not sure... Oh, the height difference? It's, it's, uh, hold on. I think, I think HP, let's see. HP 7 can't hit that high up, that's why it's not letting me do it. Okay. Alright, let me try this. It looks like it doesn't have any height modifiers. Interesting. Oh, no one's... Oh, okay, that's why. No one's health ends in seven. Okay. So it doesn't matter about height. Okay. Okay, so... To, so, all right. So here's what he does, basically. He usually just sits somewhere, usually, like, on high or low ground, depending on how you're playing. And he just spams these abilities, gets batteried, and protected. You want to keep him safe, like, with all mages. You don't want him to be in the front lines. That doesn't make any sense at all, given his kit. He can, he can have, like, tanks around him that defend him that make up front lines, but he should not be getting smacked. Um, he has, like, lower max health, but he can take, like, two hits, maybe three hits if you're lucky. But he just wants to sit somewhere back in the, you know, back out of the way, hidden in a, in a corner somewhere, just spamming these abilities. But you can see here, there's nothing with that ends in seven to hit. So, you know, it's not always the best thing. But it, it's useful to have because, like I said, like, if you want to specifically hit a target. So, like, if I wanted to hit... The spear users, uh, I can only hit one of them. You can see here, I'll only hit this one because this one's health is different. So this will hit three enemies, and these are low level enemies. So don't don't be confused like with the damage. Like this is hard mode, but these enemies are like level twenty. So he he generally deals like a hundred to two hundred damage per enemy hit, which is pretty good. Um, but unlike other mages where you control the AOE. His AOE is random because it depends on numbers, so in a in a way he's less he's less predictable than like a Frederica or a Corentin, 
uh, but he has further default range. So the, the cost of his range is bad TP generation, uh, low movement, uh, low utility, low shutdown, and what else? Random targets. So like you don't know what's going to get hit. Because like, you know, enemies will get healed, other units will hit them. So it's, it's extremely unpredictable as to what he can hit. And this right here is a perfect example. So like I can't specifically target an enemy that I want to target. It'll just like if I can hit an enemy, it's just through random numbers. Uh, so in this for this reason, I don't like to run him, but some people swear by him. He can still deal good damage, but the way he deals damage is like in general, like he'll just generally damage random things, and that can be good. And as you can see here, the target the height plus five. This is his most consistent skill for dealing damage. So on maps with elevation, especially maps like this. Like you can see here, even if these were level 50 enemies, it would deal like 100 to 200 damage to all of them. And that's big value. Um, but I mean, the other thing too, though, is if I just had Corintin cast like Glacial Moon, he could just hit all of these guaranteed. And I, don't, I wouldn't even have to think about it. So like I wouldn't even have to worry about height. So the trade-off of Decimal's range are all of the downsides I listed earlier. So So he is a good unit. Um, he's not, in my eyes, he's not exceptional because of the randomness, because one thing you want when you're planning around something is consistency. So if you have random targets, uh, poor maintenance for your TP regen, and the, like you, you can't control the unit, then you can't really rely on it when you need it in a pinch. So like if TP Physic worked 25% of the time on Medina, no one would run her. <laughs> because it wouldn't be consistent. It wouldn't be good. So, like, for Decimal... Um, I'm not saying he's bad. I think he's decent. Um, his inconsistency makes him less optimal for harder difficulties. But his range is what makes him optimal for these difficulties. Because he can chip things, and he can just damage bulk enemy unit, enemy forces safely. So there is there is a huge upside to just putting him on high ground and spamming, or putting him on low ground and spamming and just like fueling him with a battery. Um, so that being said, he is a pretty good unit. So so you can run him if you want. He would be uh, like a mage type role. You know, you keep him away from enemies, you keep him casting, you keep his TP high. So very basic mage tactics, nothing crazy there. Uh, that's pretty much it for him. Um, yeah, there's really not too much to say about him. He just has like random AoE and you can see here it's like Truly very random. Some enemies can get hit. Like you see the one in the middle can get his, his uh, health is divisible by 3 and 4. Or multiple of 3 and 4. So. Which is interesting. Uh, but then like. For HP. 5. Only one thing gets hit. Here's like what it looks like to attack. Yeah. Just like the big, big ranged attack. So that's decimal. Uh, if you like this type of content, definitely like the video and subscribe. I'm going to be covering every unit. I believe this is my 18th video. Uh, I just unlocked Trish, so I have to play a few rounds with her. Uh, she seems like a simple archer that just kind of can act twice as one of her abilities, which is good, so she can set up spikes. Um, so she actually might be a very viable unit for dealing damage, uh, but I think her range might be an issue. I don't think she has like range plus like Archibald or Huet on her basic attack, so... So that could be a downside of her. We'll have to check out her kit and go over it in more detail before making a tutorial on it. Uh, but also drop a comment as to how you use Decimal um, or where you think he excels or doesn't excel, like if he's good or bad, and like your reasoning as to why. Uh, because there might be some tactic with him that I'm unaware of that's really good, and that's true of every unit. Like there's, we're gonna be, we're still in the early stages of this game. People are discovering stuff every day, so. Like, you know, but more optimal farms, uh, insane team comps, broken, like, unit combinations, stuff like this. So we're still going to be finding out things for, like, another month or two, probably even further out, the more people experiment. So that's, like, one of the upsides of the game. If they ever do an update where they balance things or adjust, like, abilities or anything like that, or even add a new difficulty, that'll change things too. I'm hoping they add a very hard mode or a nightmare mode, so that it's, like, something that's harder than hard mode. Uh, I think that would be very fun. But yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for checking this out, and I'll see you in the next one.